Bonjour à tous. Bonjour. Bonjour à tous et euh, bienvenue sur euh, Hello everyone. Euh, première conférence digitale Emerging Welcome to the first Emerging Mediterranean, and Emerging Mediterranean Digital Confidence voilà. Conference. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, nous sommes réunis par le digital. Today we've been brought direct, together by uh, Digital Technology en, Direct en, live en, from en, the Velodrome Stadium in Marseille. Directeur général de l'Olympique de Marseille. We have the managing director of Olympique de Marseille football team who will say a few words. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who has been with us throughout the conference, all throughout the Emerging Mediterranean program as well, as well as the boot camp of the two shores, which is a laboratory for tech for good between Europe and Africa which has accelerated, sourced and financed the next generation of Tech for Good Mediterranean entrepreneurs. The idea of today is to support Mediterranean, Mediterranean startup companies to be more resilient to the challenges of today, especially which was First of the main things that we addressed during the boot camp of the two shores, which was the result of an appeal for a call for applications, uh, which, for which we received over 230 applications, a third of which were from women, from countries in Northern Africa, Tunisia, Morocco, Libya and Mauritania. <coughs> Today we'll be selecting the five finalists, the five winners of this competition from the 10 which we have whittled down from 30. First we will be talking about how these startups were selected. We had so many applications from women, which was great, from Libya, Algeria, Mauritania and Tunisia. Just before coming back to talk about the boot camp, I'm going to talk about the program of the day. We have many experts that are here with us today, talking that we were talking about certain subjects such as financial inclusion and sustainable development in the, in the Mediterranean. I would like to thank our partners, first of all, the Minister of European and International Affairs and the Mediterranean Ambassador, Mr. Amelal Karim, who will be doing the opening speech. I would also like to thank the French Development Agency and the Social and Inclusive Business Camp, which are partners. We also have country, pa country partners, first of which is the Startup Factory from Morocco, which has been our most important partner. We also have the Mauritanian Youth Chamber of Commerce. The president will, the chair, chairman, chairwoman of this organization will be speaking a little bit later on. We also have representatives from the Technopark from Casablanca. We'd also like to thank the Algerian. The Algerian Patronage Citizen Organization. In, in addition to this, I would like to thank Expertise France to, for helping us with the Libyan projects and Africa Link, who will be helping us as one of our partners. Mr. Selim Harbousk, who has really helped us identify the projects. And of course, I would like to thank the partners that we have in the local area, the ones who work with us here from Marseille. It's an iconic place for the Mediterranean. First of all, the ex-Marseille Metropole, the Department of the Bouche du Rhône, the Euro-Mediterranean, and the city of Marseille, who are partners of Emerging Mediterranean. Before talking more about what will happen throughout the day, I'm just going to tell you that we had, we will be having 10 startups pitching throughout the afternoon and then we'll be debating the results of the pitches. 
Uh, Hugues, vous avez la parole. Hugues, over to you, the managing director of Olympique de Marseille. Thank you very much, Samir. Just from listening to you, I think you're absolutely right when you say that there's no better place to be doing this today than from the Velodrome Stadium in Marseille. We share entirely the, all of the values that you have mentioned. And I think that the Olympique de Marseille football team is really engaged and committed to everything that's happening in the Mediterranean Basin just as much as you are. We have almost 2,000 women who are in the program from Northern Africa. And this is an extremely important geographical region for the club. We have actually ourselves also supported young startup companies, which have also been managed by women, as a result of which we are so happy to welcome you here as Emerging Mediterranean to present your presentation today. Thank you so much. Yes, it's so great that we all share such important values between the two shores of the Mediterranean. We have digital technology, which is one of the most important central pillars of everything that we do. Later on, we will have the closing speech given at around six o'clock to bring the day's actions to a close. Thank you so much. Before we get started with the debates, I would like you please to welcome Mr. Karim Alelal, who is the delegate representative for the Mediterranean. He will be speaking to us from Alger in Algeria. He will be giving the opening keynote speech of today's proceedings. Mr. Amelal, over to you. Hello, everyone. It's such a great pleasure for me to be able to be giving this keynote speech at the Emerging Mediterranean conference today. First of all, I would like to well I would like to welcome and congratulate all of these startup companies that have overcome so many difficulties to be here and present with us today. I really would have liked to be here with you at the Velodrome Stadium. But unfortunately, it wasn't possible because I am on the other side of the Mediterranean in Algeria. Samir, you know more than anyone why Marseille is such an important place in the dialogue between the two shores. I would also like to use this opportunity to thank Patricia Ricard. She has been working very hard with us all along the proceedings. So many different stakeholders have also been uh, contributing to the framework of the Summit of the Two Shores. In addition, I would like to thank Aisa Alam. She is the leader of the Mauritanian delegation, and she is also a part of the Mediterranean Emerging Mediterranean panel. But more than anyone, I'd like to thank Samir Abdelkrim for organizing all of this for everyone. Samir has worked tirelessly to bring everything he possibly can to this marvelous project, Emerging Mediterranean. And thanks to all of the meetings and months of hard work, we will finally be seeing the result of everything that's happened with the 10 Style, 10 final startups. We shall be seeing that this first edition of the first, first edition of the Emerging Mediterranean, which we've been wanting so much and is perfectly organized around the idea of innovative projects. All of these subjects that we'll be addressing today have been worked on so hard by the startups issues such as female entrepreneurship, sustainable development, and financial inclusion are such important issues for the future of our region. 
Everyone involved has been pushing us to act together to identify the solutions which we all share to the problems we all have. All of the startups have been selected. They are very diverse, but they have really come together in being the, at the heart of the action that all of the institutions have been leading. The finalists will be showing us how much the North can learn from the South in terms of innovative and sustainable solutions. Today, more than ever, we need to be working closely together with these innovation stakeholders in the Mediterranean. They are founded on concrete and important unifying projects which will be able to contribute to long-term e exchange and cooperation between the two shores of the Mediterranean. We need to be as open as possible to accept the experience and learn from one another that everyone has been leading within the Mediterranean to make it a more resilient and stronger place using technology to come up with a more positive social impact. As I was able to do so two weeks ago, I would also like to thank all of the work that the people who have been driving so hard to bring the experts and project leaders together today. Now we'll be seeing the finally the results, the concrete results of all of the efforts. So this afternoon we'll be highlighting all of the excellent work that everyone has been doing after the call for applications which was extremely successful and thanks to all of the hard work and energy that people have been putting in to their pitches and their innovative solutions. As such, I would like to congratulate Samir Abdel Krim. He's brought everything together and got everyone unified in the same place so that we can focus on the first of a long series of very positive agendas. Have a good conference, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Karim. Once again, it's so great to hear how digital technology can have a real impact to positively change the two shores of the Mediterranean and bring out a more positive agenda between Mediterranean and European countries. And why not even inspire a more engaged dynamic between these, between these countries? We're going to be looking at how tech for good between these countries can have a more impact a more positive impact on society in, for example, energy or in the environment. And we'll also be looking at inclusivity once more. We want to talk about this during the debates over the afternoon, which we are will be holding here at the Velodrome Stadium. We were having several different interviews with industry experts, the first of which is with the president, the chairman of the French Digital Council. This interview is a kind of keynote speech for Tech for Good in the Mediterranean. And we're going to be looking at how digital technology can be a positive impact how it can how it can have a benefit a beneficial impact and we're going to move over to the pitch side interview in just a few minutes after which we will present the panel and all of the experts that will be intervening here we go over to the inaugural keynote interview It's been such a privilege. It's been such a privilege. Thank you so much for being here with me, pitch side at the at the <clears throat> at the Velodrome Stadium. We're going to be talking about tech for good in the Mediterranean, which is one of the most important subjects of our debates all after all afternoon. 
So over to you. How do you think that Tech for Good can be a positive impact on the Mediterranean? Because it's one of the biggest issues which you have been working on uh, within French society. At the moment, everyone is struggling with the aftermath of COVID and how it's impacted everyone. How do you think that these issues can be resolved if we all work together and focus on pooling our resources and our skills? I would just like to start with you, Salwa, by asking what is your vision on digital diplomacy and more specifically the synergies which are need to be created between the north and southern shores of the Mediterranean? Thank you very much, Samir. I'm so honored to be here with you at the opening of your first edition of Emerging Mediterranean. Yes, you're right. It is the first edition of Emerging Mediterranean, but the th later on we will be having the fourth edition of Emerging Valley in April. To talk about digital diplomacy, it's really something which has only come about very recently. So I've been working in this area for two years and I'm coming to the end of my mandate. You're right, it's a very important subject which both Europe and North Africa have been working on and need to improve in the future. In my opinion, as you said it yourself, it's very important to know how to use the internet properly. Over the last few years, the activities that have been going out on the internet have been come under rather critical eye from many people because so many people are using the internet to try and help them with their businesses and build partnerships. All of the work that we've been doing over the last two years has all been about awareness and teaching people how we can how to try and use the internet to have a more positive impact on the planet so that we can create new partnerships between Mediterranean or international stakeholders. These can be government or non-government stakeholders. We've been working on how to support this digital transformation to make uh, to make the, the field more inclusive for everyone. This is the main focus of our work. Something else we'll be discussing at great length today is sustainability. Digital technology is relevant to this. Your organization has been able to come up with a roadmap as such, what kind of observations and conclusions have you come to regarding digital technology within the context of a, the Mediterranean politics? That's a very good question. It's rather difficult to answer properly. We have a roadmap which is very ambitious with the idea of trying to come up with new partnerships which are inclusive for all regional stakeholders. The environment is a very important issue which needs to be addressed properly as well today. We've been trying to make in, we're trying to include the environment into the roadmap that we've come up with about digital technology. 
There are certain activities that humans carry out which are much more damaging than others. And unless we try and address that, humanity will not progress. Therefore, in hindsight, what I would say is that we need to look at the way that we are living, industries, we need to learn from our failures, and we both need to be thinking about a more sober digital technology, but also digital technology which will be able to benefit humans as much as possible in the future. It's really a balancing act that we have tried as best as we can to include in our program. This has allowed us to continue measuring the impact that we've been having and do everything we can to make every single industry possible as well as they possibly can be about the impact that they are having on the environment. We've been working closely with groups of experts have, that have helped us manage this program. It's very important to not be too against uh, new changes in industries. You need to be adaptable and flexible. As you might know, we, uh, we launched an appeal uh, call for applications, which was extremely successful. Two weeks ago, we had the three-day boot camp of the two shores, which was held in Casablanca, and during which we went from 30 to 10 startups. In your opinion, what role do Mediterranean startups have, perhaps for governments? And what role do they have in the civil society that we have today? And how should they try and impact it as, ben as beneficially as they can? It's a very good question. Being an entrepreneur is, as I'm sure you know, not hopefully all about working for the good of humanity as much as possible. Tech for Good is something that is relatively a relatively new concept in France and elsewhere. Startups should be trying to use technology for the common good to support human development and to improve the impact that we are all having on the environment in our societies. That can be for education, economy, agriculture, or maybe even food processing as well. There are many different industries which are involved in this, and they should all be taking note. I think that the governments are very conscious of the big challenges that we are being faced with. These challenges affect all of us equally as we're all inhabitants of this planet. We're all on the same playing field. The question really is how can we encourage this type of innovation and not just focus on innovation which is about making money. We also want to focus a lot on positive impact. Another subject which you really care about is the place of women in entrepreneurship. And we do too. It's one of the most important areas that we've been working on, trying to encourage women to get more into business. You have developed uh, a commitment charter about female entrepreneurs. I would like you to tell me, please, in as best you can, and we'll be going back to this during the debates this, after, this afternoon. How can we try and promote the place of female entrepreneurs in te digital technology today? This is really a civilization problem. For, that affects all of us. It's really important for women to be is included into entrepreneurship as much as possible. I personally have started my own company. 
d'éducation et des carrières professionnelles dans la tête pour elles et pour partie de cette... I want to encourage other women to do the same in the future. They need to get trained, they need to get access to the right sources, the right funds. I'm not, the only, I'm not the only woman who shares this opinions. There are many of us that are of, on the same wavelength with regards to including women into entrepreneurship. thing is, in France today, the amount of women in entrepreneurship is less than 10%. And France is far from being the only country in this situation. The charter that we have come up with, which we have been working on in the organization that I work for, is all about one main goal, ensuring that financing fe women in entrepreneurship continues to grow in the future to create more opportunities for females to get involved in business and digital technology. It's really important for women to not be seen as some second-rate business people. They need to be um, they need to be seen as some kind as a valid stakeholder in any kind of business plan. We need to do away with any kind of sexist ideology particularly with regards to investors and funders, which are almost entirely men. It's very important for people to realize that we're not, that investors don't just invest in companies, they invest in people, and women are just as valid a people, a person to invest in as men. Completely ignoring half of the world population it seems to me like a ridiculous idea of uh, a ridiculous way of going about business because you're only getting access to half of the available skill sets. I'm therefore delighted that you have dedicated one entire debate session this afternoon to female entrepreneurs and women and including women in business in general. Yes, you're right. Including women in business is essential. It's something that we have not put, have not been blind to. We've been trying to encourage others to do the same. It's not just about women staying at home and looking after the children. They should be, should have just as many opportunities to get involved in the value chain as anyone else. Because for me, entrepreneurship in Africa and in the Mediterranean is work is all about working every day, daily efforts to try and improve lives for as many people around the world as possible. And as such, women have just as important a role in all of that as men. Yes, absolutely. I, I firmly believe that the digital business revolution in the Mediterranean will be led by women. And as such, we are very lucky to have a panel with lots of women on it who will be able to give their opinions from Algeria, Tunisia, and Mauritania. Three, so three of the three of the members of the final panel that we have today are women. Thank you very much. It's been so great to talk to you and exchange about your vision of things. We are now going to move on to the first topic of today. And as such, we can declare Emerging Mediterranean officially open. We will be moving up to the Salon des Légendes in the Velodrome Stadium to start with the first topic, which will be debated. We've been working on all of this for so long, and two weeks ago we had the boot camp of the two shores, which addressed all of these topics, and had entrepreneurs from five different countries in northern Africa. There were many, many different interesting debates then as well, and I hope that we will have just as interesting debates this afternoon. Thank you so much.